Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over UFC 308 from Abu Dhabi. And this is going to be the first of probably three videos this week, where first we go through the entire card from a DFS perspective and identify who I think the best players are going to be. And then um, tomorrow, we're going to do a betting breakdown. We took a, a week off from the betting breakdown last week, and we're going to be doing a, kind of a fun contrarian betting breakdown tomorrow. And then probably I'm not going to have time Saturday morning to do the lineup construction video. So I'm going to try to do that. Well, I'm going to do that tomorrow because, um, as well, because uh, it is a 10 a.m. Saturday um, start uh, time which is very convenient for for me and for a lot of people that uh you know would like to watch the fights and not you know have to kill their Saturday evenings to do so. So uh because it's in Abu Dhabi, the time change makes this possible. In addition to that, it's an extremely it's an extremely stacked card. I mean, you have two five-round fights with just incredible fighters and you have all kinds of grapplers and 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 knockout people and just just throughout the card uh no female fights this week uh next week actually we're gonna have a pretty intriguing matchup between uh aaron blanchfield and uh and rose nama um but we'll get to that when we get to that so we're just gonna go through from the bottom up and you, you'll you will see a very uh a common theme throughout this uh, this card, and whether it's because it's in Abu Dhabi that you have all these Russian fighters just going, going. Uh, nonetheless, there's a lot of grappling and a lot of grappling upside um, available. So one thing I will say is that even though one fight was taken off, with, with 13 fights, there's going to be the possibility for extremely high DraftKings scores. The other thing not to kind of skip ahead, but you have two five round fights, which are, you know, they, they rate to score very well, but there's just so many other options on this card that could score just as well that you don't have to lock in these two main events. In my opinion, I mean, we'll, we'll get into more of that when we do uh, the line of construction video, but as we go through these, you'll see that there's just a whole bunch of fights where you could really get some big scores. Uh, the other thing is that as a result of that, there's going to be two or three fights that I could probably make a case for on other cards that on this card, you just you just have to find, you know, you're just going to have to fade, I think. You just, there's just not enough combinations to get to those types of, to those to those fights, but we'll get there as well. We'll just start right off with the first fight of the night. We're going to have uh, Renat Fakradinov against um, a short-notice replacement, Carlos Leal, who, from what I've heard, is is actually not bad. Um, usually these short-notice replacements, they just kind of throw them to the wolves. But this guy's apparently not bad. And from what I've heard, the line is probably kind of wide, but that's for another uh, – that's kind of for another discussion. But nonetheless, you have a 2-1 to one versus plus 170. The price itself – is is looks relatively fair. Um, as a matter of fact, you could argue that backwards, you know, might have a little bit of line value, but nothing, nothing major. So we got to get to right to the numbers here. And this is going to be a theme throughout. Uh, normally we're really focusing in on inside the distance lines, which we are, but uh, you have to factor in the takedown upside for, for a lot of these fights um, so like Renat Fakradinov, for example, his inside the distance line is just is relatively, I mean, it's very pedestrian to say the least for his price tag. I mean, normally at plus 270 or whatever he is uh, to finish, we have no interest in playing him at 8,900. However, I mean, a, 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 a even a cursory look at his, his game log, I mean, if you get this seven takedown performance or five takedown performance and not only that, but you have all kinds of of control time at your disposal as well. Um, you know, this guy can really score. Um, you have two, well, one fight here with the 130. This is the one I'm focusing on. He had a knockdown and seven takedowns and 14, is that real? 14 minutes of control time? 
I mean, you can't you can't expect that, but you could certainly expect maybe this, where you have at least a hundred. I just don't see any variation really where you uh, he wins and like completely busts, you know. So I can't imagine a win carrying less than a hundred points for him. So he's got to be in play. Um, Leal, on the other hand, we have to kind of identify as someone who is, you know, knockout or bust, right? So we have to, you know, deal with his inside the distance line. And for his price, as long as it's plus 300, that's actually not bad. Just a little light, you know, he's plus 550 or so. Now, maybe I just went a little bit too fast. The reason why we really have to focus in on the inside the distance lines, even for these underdogs, is when you have 13 fights, it's just usually not enough to get an underdog to win. You got to get an underdog to win and put up a score. Um, or if he's not going to do that, at least have him uh, uh, take out a very highly owned opponent. Um, now, now, as you'll see when we go through the you know lineup construction video more, I don't really believe that anybody on this card is going to be that highly owned. I mean, I was talking about this with someone in Discord yesterday. And if I had to guess who the most popular fighter on the slate would be. I guess it would have to be Shamayev. Um, I, I've heard it argued maybe that 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 Holloway, even as an underdog, might be the most popular. I don't think that Taporia is going to be the most popular, just because again, because Holloway could be very popular. So there's not there's only so much ownership to go around, and so I think that Shamayev is probably the most popular. But I don't think anybody's going to be like hugely popular. So like, you get a guy like, like Fakradinov, for example. I mean, he looks fine, but he doesn't look any better than seven other favorites that we're going to talk about probably. So if you're considering playing Miranda, you either have to have a good inside the distance line, which you don't, or good money line uh, value, which you don't, or a lot of leverage against a popular fighter, which you don't. So I don't think Miranda is particularly good in, in DFS. Um, so again, just to kind of keep track, I guess you want to, you want to pull up a, a lineup and then we'll just start putting stuff in here. So backwards, Dean off, I definitely think's in play. And I think your first fade is probably going to be Leal. All right. Uh, Bruno Silva versus, uh, versus Nurdiev. Um, Okay. Forget about who he thinks is going to win and all this not all this stuff about Nurdiev or Bruno Silva. Bruno Silva, but okay, we'll talk a little bit. But Bruno Silva has been very – he's been struggling. You know, he he hasn't – I don't think he's gotten a, win, a meaningful win in a while. He I think he fought – was it, was it Weidman? Uh, just a he, – he lost to Chris Weidman? I mean, that's – I mean, that's, that's – uh, that's not good. <laughs> that's just that's really just not a good sign here, right? Um, I didn't even realize that. I guess I was away for this one. I knew that he was big favorite. I don't know that he actually lost. Oh, that's brutal. And before that, before that, I actually thought he was pretty good against uh Shara. He lost. I mean, he you know, he just got outstruck, but he did get some takedowns and control time, but uh then he got mauled by Brandon Allen when I needed and I needed him for like two hundred thousand. I remember that. He got a win over Brad Tavares, which which they honestly didn't have to stop. So he kind of got a little lucky there. Subbed by Mearshart. I mean, it's it's just not good. You know, Jordan Wright's the war was the worst. So. I'm hearing a lot of kind of love for Bruno Silva here, but I, I boy, he's he's gonna have to show it to me. Anyway, that's not what we're really talking about here. So, so and Nordiev, I've heard that he's not that great either. I mean, losing to he's been losing to to the regional guys, and so this fight looks like sort of a bust, I guess. But but let's look at the inside the distance lines. I really don't want to play this one, but. You might have to. Let's see. I don't know. So Bruno Silva inside plus 240 or so. 
That's just awful. I mean, at his price on this card, you just got to have to do better. Um, so I don't know. Maybe we're supposed to just fade this whole thing. Nardi of Inside the Distance plus 200 or plus 180 at his price. I mean, I guess. I just feel as though it's a 13 fight card and, and you're just not going to need this type of metric. You know, I just, we're going to get to a couple in a minute where, where the fight's almost a lock to finish at the same price tag where this one could, could be kind of awful. So I think that both these fighters are, I hate to cop out here, but they're like 150 max type players, you know, uh, top fighters, uh, part, type fighters. I don't think you're going to need to play them in 20 max or three max or certainly not single entry. They're certainly not priorities. So let's just kind of put them off to the side for now, I suppose. All right. Fareed Basharad versus Victor Hugo. All right. So this is the first of, of, I mean, several that look like this. Actually, it's the second of several that look like this. So we already talked about Fakhradinov and Basharat is similar in with respect to his inside the distance line. His inside the distance line is extremely poor for his extremely high price. You know, it's plus 200 inside, but, and his price, what, 95, 9,600. But, you know, he, he can get the wrestling shoes going in fine style here. And, and, you know, and maybe be able to put up a score. Problem is, is that, he just hasn't done it yet. I mean, even three three takedowns, two takedowns, five takedowns, none of these scores win, you know? Uh, excuse me, none of these scores even approach the optimal. So unless he does something we've never seen before, uh, he's just going to be a toss at 9,600, I hate to say. Um, Victor Hugo, on the other hand, He's 6,600. He doesn't really win often enough. I mean, this is kind of the problem. You know, he's going to win, what, 20, maybe 20% 20 of the time? Um, and Bashrat's not going to be popular, so you don't get leverage. His inside the distance line is poor. So, okay. So we could, we could toss this fight. That's actually not bad. What's this? Uh, wait one second. Well, that's not bad. Um, got to pause you guys for just a second. Sorry, so as I was saying, I mean, maybe we could just, we could toss Basharat. All right, so now we have Kennedy and Jekwuku versus Chris Barnett. He's a minus 8 million favorite. Um, I mean, that's the good news. Also, his inside the distance line is extremely strong. I mean, it's minus... 250 which is which is really really good but remember what we're looking for here we're looking for high scores and his price is 9700 so for 9700 i mean I, I hate to put it this way but you're gonna need a lot you, you know when i say you're gonna need well it's possible that 9700 is gonna require even 130 to get there considering what other fighters on this card could put up. So to get that, you're going to need not only a first round knockout, but it's got to be either in the first minute where you get that bonus or accompanied by maybe at least two knockdowns or a, a takedown and a, and a first round sub with a lot of ground and pound. I don't know. It's, um, his round one prop is plus like 180 or 200. So it's a tough one. I have to say, I mean, if you play and if you play him, you know, you're going to need like multiple punts, right. To, to get there so far, we haven't seen any, but uh, that we liked. So to spend up for 9,700 is, is kind of, kind of rough. So let's for now, I mean, let's toss him, I guess. So all we're left with in this car where I said you're going to have all this upside is just kind of like one fighter right now. <laughs> um, so let's just see where we can, what, what happens. So let's move on. We have 
Bruno Ferreira or Fajaya versus Abus Magomedov. So let's first take a look at the, the pricing here. You have 8,400 and 7,800. And now we're kind of getting somewhere because you look at the inside the distance line here, you have Mag you have Fajaya at, you know, plus 170 inside at 7,800. I mean, that's, that's a number, you know? That that that's actually a number. I mean, you compare that to the what was the Bruno Silva one again? Plus three hundred or more. Silva was plus two seventy, as opposed to Fajaya, who is plus like a lot more, right? A lot better, like plus one seventy, same price. So so Fajaya is definitely a better play as one of those mid range underdogs. Um, and Abus, on the other hand, he he's got. Both, both things going for him. He's got an extremely strong inside the distance line, like plus 130 or so for his price. Plus, he's got some grappling upside. So this fight is is definitely a fight you're going to want to get a hold of. So whether it be Maga Madoff or Fajaya, this this fight is, is just, just tons of upside and it's got tons of savings because of the price. So this is the first fight that you're going to want to really, really target. Now, when it comes to lineup construction, we could have the, you know, we could talk about this at the, in that, you know, the next video, but I mean, you have the Nordiev Silva fight, which is priced very similarly, and it's going to be probably half his owned. So in, in 150 max, maybe whatever you were going to do with stacking this fight, you could stack with this fight. But, but again, that's for a different discussion. As far as just who the best plays are, and Maga Madoff and, and Fajaya, one of one of these two should probably be in your, you know, in your low risk type lineups. So let's put both of them in for now. All right, moving on. Uh Orobai versus Rebecca. All right. So Orobai is minus 300, and his price is 9100, which is very fair. Um, to say the least. Cons Listen, we talked about Fakhradinov. He was 8,900 at 2 to 1. You only pay an extra 200 for Alibi at, 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 at 91, uh, at 3 to 1. And the metrics are similar. Like, what what I mean is, Alibi's inside the distance line is probably not great. So it's like, what, plus, what is that, plus 160, something like that? Okay. Which is okay. I mean, it's not great for ninety one hundred, honestly, on a huge card. But his his wrestling upside is just so obscene. You know, you look at his fights here. He's got five takedowns, seven takedowns, a lot of control time. Um, this is you know one hundred twenty point upside. I mean, we just see it. Not only that, but this one, this was this was just the takedowns. It didn't even have any any you know ground and pound. But that's actually kind of an interesting point, is that can you really count on him to get seven takedowns? You know, uh, Rebeski is not Rebecca is not bad. You know, we he we were just playing him as as like the greatest fighter of all time at 9,400. Okay. And in that fight, by the way, I mean, listen, he fought Diego Ferreira, who's like freaking, you know, he's like he's like a legend. OK, I mean, he's got all the grappling that you can want. And and, and Rebecca got four takedowns himself. You know, he got two takedowns before three takedowns against Fiore, you know, a couple of fights before that. He destroyed Rajabov with the one takedown, two knockdowns. I mean, I remember that. That was that was the uh, the, the live final. Um, I mean, he this is this is not an easy fight for Oral by I, I will say this and. I'll say this also is from a DFS perspective. If Rebecca can just put it on him in the first rounds, even if Orobai kind of survives and then gets the gets it going, do you want to play him in ninety one hundred with only two rounds to get there? You know what I mean? Like for Orobai to get there, he, you're going to need all three rounds to work with because of the grappling. And if he loses literally one round, he's probably busting. Okay. Um, so on the one hand, Arabai his 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 upside is is you know, you can't dispute this. But on the other, 
I mean, at what could be on the high end of the ownership, th this could be kind of a nice tactful fade, actually. Um, either to just play Rebecca or to just fade the fight completely. Because I'm telling you, this is the way it works. If Rebecca wins the first round, or I'll buy bus. And I think that or I think that Rebecca can win the first round. I mean, he's very aggressive. He's good. You know, I just imagine what what if he won that fight against Fahey? It was a close fight, right? You know, until until he finally got 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 beat in the last in the third round. But um I think there's a little bit of too much recency bias in here. I mean, or I'll buy he beat. You know, I don't know. Uros Medic, who, who's terrible on the mat. Elvis Brenner, I guess he's okay. So I, I don't, I don't know about any of this. I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little suspicious of of Oral Bio could be end up chalky. I, one thing I will say is that Rebecca is clearly, is clearly someone you want to go, go, you know, play in your in your in your underdog pool. Uh, your underdog pool in, as part of your underdogs. Um, we'll put him in or I'll buy just because. I mean, if he does, if I'm wrong or whatever, or if I just completely just starts grappling him and gets it going, I mean, it could be a long day and and or I could get that 110 rather easily. But um, is he better than Fakradinov? I mean, I guess he has to be, right? He's more likely to win. He's got the same wrestling upside. So I guess these two are pretty much equal. That's the way I would look at it. All right, moving on. Uh, Jeff Neal versus Rafael DeSantos. All right, so Jeff Neal is just not viable on this card, I don't believe. I mean, he's he, he's a striker, pure striker. So as a striker, we're really just looking at his inside the distance line. And his inside the distance line is very, you know, it's not that great for his price. It's plus 165 or so. Um, and plus 165 for a $9,200 fighter with no grappling to fall back on is just not going to work. So I, I don't like, I don't like the Jeff Neal side. The Dos Anjos side is actually pretty intriguing to me um, because I, I know what he's going to do. <laughs> he's going to try for takedowns. And yeah, Jeff Neal has, you know, some very, very good takedown defense. Uh, however, um, uh, Dos Anjos is extremely good. <laughs> uh, now, again, he's 40, so we have that problem. But he's been he's been getting takedowns since the, you know, for quite a long time. I mean, six take, look at this, so six takedowns, five takedowns, two takedowns, four takedowns, two takedowns. Okay, he couldn't get anything going against Gamrot, but I mean, Gamrot's the nuts, you know? Uh, so this, this against Moicano, this one, he just completely destroyed him on the mat. Moicano has short, had short notice in that fight. I remember that, but, but I don't know, 7k, I guess not. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna leave him in my player pool. I wish that Neil was a little more popular. Then then I could rely on again getting some you know some leverage. But I will say this: if in fact Dos Anjos can somehow pull this off, he's gonna it's gonna be because he had takedowns and control time. I mean, he's not gonna win a striking battle. So if he wins, and he's not listen, he's not gonna win that often, right? He's gonna win what? Actually, this is not bad. What is this plus two forty? He's going to win what twenty thirty percent of the time, twenty five percent of the time, twenty seven percent of the time. When he wins, he's he's going to be optimal, isn't he? Yeah, I, I, you know what? You you got to you got to do this. You just have to do it. So I am definitely recommending Dos Anjos so far. So as far as underdogs so far, we have Dos Anjos, Rebecca, Fajaya. Um, wow, this is uh. I'm surprised I liked him so much, but it just it just it just staring me right in the face here. I mean, all of his wins are going to be optimal, and he wins often enough where you can play him. It's just really as simple as that. All right, uh, let's move on. Uh, Shara Magomedov versus Armin Petrosian. All right, so 
unfortunately, well, fortunate or unfortunately, this fight is is one where on another card you could play, but on this card it's just going to be a fade. Uh, you have two completely complete strikers, and when you have striker versus striker, the only thing you could really look at is inside. Well, you could look at volume, but all, but mostly the inside the distance lines, and neither of these guys rate well. Petrosian particularly. I mean, he's a plus 900 inside, but Maga Madoff as the favorite is like plus 300 or so inside. I mean, this is um, this is a fight which is a 100% fade for me. All right. Getting to the meat and potatoes here. You have Lerone Murphy versus Dan Ige. Fortunately, you know what? I think we have another fade fight here. You have Lerone Murphy, who is really not a finisher. And let's take a look. Murphy inside the distance is plus like 600. So that makes him on that completely unplayable. Dan Ige inside plus 800. That's unplayable. The only thing I would say is in, in high-risk contests, you could take a shot at Lerone Murphy, the possibility that he can get some takedowns going. Um, I, it does seem like he can do it. You know, his last two fights, he had four takedowns against Barboza and, and three against Kulabau. I mean, this type of fight, I mean, this is a this was a this was a big time win. It really was against uh Barbosa. There were a lot of people that were advocating for Barbosa in this fight, didn't respect the, you know, the record of Lerone Murphy. And Lerone Murphy beat him pillar to post. I mean, he really did. I mean, he got the takedowns in control time, and he was quicker to the punch. I mean, this guy's good, you know? So, um, can he get can he get there at 8,900? I mean, he's going to need to either get a takedown. He's going to either need to get a finish, which is outside of his, you know, props right it's going to be it's unlikely or get one of these takedown games going um he's the good news is he's going to be just zero percent owned because of all these 8900 hour guys we talked about and the ones we will talk about you know we we have fakradinov who's going to get a lot more takedowns than him he rates to you're going to have um oral by who's 9100 just 200 more and then we're going to talk about Shemaev is going to be the, probably the most popular on the slate. And you're going to have Tapori at 8,800. So at 8,900, Murphy is going to be just insane leverage uh, against all those other fighters in that range. In the 150 max, I, I'm definitely going to be playing a bunch of this. In 20 max and below, am I going to talk myself into this? I, mean, I might. I mean, this is, I, you can just see this happening, right? People are, people have their lineups going and they have their scores and they say, okay, we're just waiting for these main events to kind of, kind of happen. I got a good number. Uh, I just need to fade these last two fights. You know, no, you know, no one's going to score well on the Murphy Ige fight or the Ankalev Rockets fight. Next thing you know, Murphy puts up a 120 piece and then you're going looking through your lineups and wondering what happened. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be my kind of who do play, I guess, of the week. If I had to make one on Thursday is Lerone, Lerone Murphy, just kind of like salary leverage against all that other stuff. Um, okay. Uh, moving on, uh, Ankalaev versus Rakic. Uh, no matter how I, tr how I try to play Ankalaev and make excuses, he just, he just doesn't score. He just doesn't. He's he's minus about 400 favorite and his inside the distance line is plus 200. You know what I mean? Like you just, and he doesn't really go for the wrestling all that much. Um, So I've tried to play him so many times as, as kind of that contrarian spend up to play, con be contrarian. And each time it's like 96, 80, Five round fight, he scored eighty. I mean, like it's it's really everything you need to know, isn't it? You know, draw against Blahovich. Ah, 
11 minutes of control time. That's something. Uh, this this was a no no contest here. He did he did get get rid of him though, and then he he dispatched him pretty easily here. But ninety six, what's that going to do for me? Yeah, I don't know. And Rockets, he's been around the block. You know, he could survive. You know, it's not like I guess he could survive. Maybe he can't survive. Uh, you know what? Boy, he got beat by Ozdemir. I mean, this is. Is am I going to do this again? Am I just going to play Ankle at ninety four hundred and just hope he, this is the one that he smashes? I, I I guess not. I guess you're just going to have to fade the fight. All right, so now we're at the two main events. Both of them are five round fights. Both of them are amazing matchups. We're going to try to um, to avoid talking too much about the fights themselves and and, and really just get into the DFS aspect 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 of this. So as I mentioned, Shamayev is probably going to be the most popular fighter, and and, and well, I'm, I was about to say for good reason, but let's let's talk about this. So he's eighty seven hundred. All right. So he also has a five round window to work with. He's got. Let's look at the inside the distance line first. All right, first inside the distance, he's minus one fifty. The the other thing about this is that Shemaev is probably most likely to get his finish early. So it's not even that the inside the distance line is good. It's also in the first, it's probably heavily weighted to the first two rounds. In addition to that, he's got just incredible takedown upside, control time upside, and all that combines with the fact he might have the five rounds to work with anyway. All that combines to indicate that he's an extremely strong play. Um, now, he's never gone five rounds, so I don't know how much the five rounds is actually going to help him. And that's certainly to something to, to, to talk about. And you look at his scores, they're, they're fine. You know, 92 in a decision win against Usman. That's fine. Uh, the Holland first round sub. I mean, what do you, what do you want from the guy? He killed him like two seconds. Burns hundred and one in a decision win. This this thing's like a mere sharp one punch. So his his upside. Oh yeah, one one twenty two against the scrub. One twenty four against the scrub. Whatever. So he does have upside, but he's has he ever really put up a score like this like, that you're going to need against a really good opponent. I mean, 100 against Burns, that's okay. It's not a lock, right? Uzman 92, does that get there? I don't think so. So given his ownership, and given the fact that I don't know really how much the five rounds are going to help, I, I, I'm, I'm inclined to fade in, in, in the big GPPs. Now, I don't mean fully fade. But I'm inclined to be under on him. Um, I know, I know. I'm I'm getting too much out of the who the best plays are and into who I might actually play. Shemaev is a really, really good play. I'm not going to dispute that. Is he the best play on the slate? Well, you know, we'll, we'll, let's talk about that. All right. After after the after I finish the main event, let's actually talk about who just the best play on the slate is. That'll be interesting. Now, as far as Whitaker goes. I mean, he's 7,500. He's got five rounds to work with. He, he could score. Well, I was about to say he could score points in a lot of ways. I don't see how he is going to be scoring points via takedowns in this fight. I mean, he could in other fights, but not this one. He's going to score his points based on volume, striking, Might maybe has some KO upside as well. Uh, let's like Whitaker inside the distance plus 300. That's actually pretty reasonable for 7,500. And the other thing is that, as I mentioned, Shemaev is going to be pretty, you know, if probably the most popular fighter on the slate. So that is going to also add to the allure of playing Robert Whitaker. So Robert Whitaker, for a lot of reasons, the, the decent money line, the decent inside the distance line, and the, the five round to work with, five rounds to work with, and the... um 
uh, the leverage against Shemaev certainly makes him one of the better underdogs, if not the best underdog. Well, we'll get to that in a minute on the slate. So let's let's remove like a couple of these guys for now. Let's, let's remind ourselves. Whitaker, good underdog. Certainly, listen, uh, certainly Shemaev is a good good favorite, you know, and but as I mentioned, you don't have to play this fight. This is not like the last couple of, of, of days where last couple of, of cards where you really had to consider playing this main event. Like last week, this main event was like ridiculous. I mean, you just knew that something was going to, that somebody was going to smash there. And you ended up with one of the top five scores I can remember uh, from Fluffy. Anyway, moving on to the main event, uh, Ilya against uh, Max Holloway. It's Corey versus Max Holloway. Five rounds, and in this fight, I think five rounds, I mean, contrary to what you're hearing, I think it helps both fighters quite a bit. Um, you have seen, well, certainly you've seen Max Holloway. That's all he does is, well, pretty much all he does is fight these five-round fights. Um, five round, five rounds, five rounds, five rounds. I mean, and he, he is in there all the way to the end. This Gaethje fight, it says KO, but this was in the last five seconds. So he went like full 25 minutes, you know, um, putting up like incredible volume, has kind of an iron chin. You know, you can't knock him out. Uh, so at 7,400, these, these are this guy, this guy you're going to want to play. I mean, like in his wins, he's just going to score. He's just going to have to. I mean, how is he not, how is he beating Tapuria without putting on a freaking pace show and volume and all kinds of stuff? So you're just going to have to play him here. I mean, at, at, at only two to one odds, you know, it's just, he's going to be, as I mentioned, very popular, but he's just got to be, have to be a part of your underdog pool, if not the, the top of your underdog pool. So yeah. Um, Tapuria, I mean, I've heard that he's he's gases somewhat. I, I I don't I don't remember it that way. I mean, they're 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 looking at this um, Emmett fight for them saying that he kind of gassed. I, I don't listen. I had all the Tapuri in that fight. I needed him for a lot of money in that uh, live final, so I was sweating that. He was he was just fine. Okay, he basically 10 seven Emmett in the fourth, and then the fifth round he went to the grappling and and you know. Uh, I thought he was just fine there. Um, so I'm not worried about that. I think the five rounds help him help him as well. I do think that he is more likely to bust in a win than Holloway is. I do think that, that there are variations where Tapuria wins and scores 90 or 95. That being, you know, you could get he could get a second round knockout. And score 90-95. He get a third round knockout, score 90-95. He could win a decision and score 95 or so. You know, Tapuri is not exactly high volume. You know what I mean? He he picks his shots, you know, he uses his footwork. You know, like some of these fights here, I mean, the Emmett fight was, you know, that was over five rounds, or whatever. It's 150 significant strikes, but Volk. I guess it was only two rounds, but he he doesn't really th this what what is this? So against Zalal, this was a weird way to win, right? I mean, he this way he took the guy, took him down and didn't go for any ground and pound like at all, you know? Um, so it's not as if he's a big volume guy. So I think that that he is more likely to fail in a win than um than what's his name? Than uh, than Holloway. As a matter of fact, I think he's also more likely to fail in a win. Remember this price than Fakradinov. Do I think Fakradinov? If he wins, he he is he is getting a hundred. Well, is he? I mean, there are some eighties and eighty fives in in that in that range of outcomes. I imagine. But considering that Tapur is going to be more popular than Fakradinov, you know, or say, what about, what's his name? What about, uh, 
the ninety one hundred dollar guy. Oh, I forgot a fight. I suck. Uh, I'll get there in a minute. Sorry. Um, what about the ninety one hundred dollar guy? Oral buy. If he wins, does he score less than a hundred? I guess it's possible. You know what I mean? Like if Rebecca really has a good first round, but then her aura by takes over, aura by could get an 80, 85 and a win. So, but I think that, 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 that this fight, you do, you can fade. Okay. Because how, do, how does, how does Holloway bust? Well, Holloway busts like 33%, 66% of the time, right? Because he loses. <laughs> and I think Taporia busts probably about 66% of the time as well, because, He's going to win, well, I shouldn't say 66%. So he wins 33% of the time, excuse me, 66% of the time of those, probably gets there. All right, I don't want to get, go through all this, but but I definitely think the main event is, is good, but I don't think it's a must. The last fight, which again, I don't know why I just missed it. I apologize. And it's crazy that I missed it because it's, <laughs> unfortunately, it's probably the, fight you want to target almost as much as this, uh, if not more than the Abus Bruno fight. And that's this ridiculously stupid fight between Ibo Asnon and, 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 um, and Rafael Kerchera. It's an 8,208K heavyweight fight or it's light heavyweight fight, whatever. That's a complete car crash. You know, you have, both of these fighters at about minus 100 inside the distance or about pick them at this price. These are both kind of theoretical locks, you know, as a matter. I mean, when you look at this, this is just as good. This is better. I think than the Silva, not Silva fight, definitely better than the Silva fight, but even better than the Abus fight. I mean, how, how do you fade this? Like plus 120 on both sides. So let let's 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 talk about this for for a few minutes. All right. And then we'll then we'll I don't want to go too much into lineup construction, but the the the, the key fights, okay, are gonna be the one I just mentioned. Again, I, and I don't care which of these guys you play. And then the Abus fight, I don't care which of these you play. So those are the key fights. Now, now again, it's it's oh wait, you you have to say that the main events are are the next key fights. But if you play this type of construction, you're probably going to be very chalky. You know, you play both main events and one of those two fights. That's what everybody's probably going to do. But I mean, it doesn't take a genius to see that if you play something like this you play the both main event underdogs, you could just jam in any of these, any of these dudes we talked about, like Arabai, Fakradinov. As a matter of fact, I don't want to get too crazy with giving, doing combinations, but I'm just curious. Just let's see. If you put in Sapuria and then uh, Shemaev, can't quite, do it but you could play one of these guys oh and is that is this where you get to now you don't quite get to dos Anjos, but you get pretty close like for example i mean well the reason why i could put this up here is because it's going to be so chalky that you know if you want to do this and then you play both main event favorites and then even the favorites for those two key fights then you could play one of these big upside things, and and I I don't remind you of who I like down here, so I can't fill that. Um, but I think there's a lot of good ways to play this week using these fights um, that I mentioned. Uh, as far as who the best play is, it's hard to say without getting into lineup construction and without getting into leverage. So we're gonna wait on that until. The um, we do the lineup construction video, but overall, really, really good card, uh, very instructive, and uh, I will see you guys for the next video.